Hello and very glad you could join us. This is Of The Press where we'll bring you the major headlines from the National Dailies. I am Benny Ark and with me in the studio to analyze major headlines of public affairs analysts, Bolahon, Olojade and Dr. Femi Adegoke. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. And thank you for joining me this morning on All The Press. Good to be here. Let's get into the dailies and let's see what the headlines are saying in the Disney newspaper. CBN sectoral intervention saved Nigeria 1.3 trillion naira annual import bill. NLC hails MFLA backs border closure. And federal government to transform grazing reserves to ranches in seven states. And that is on page eight on the Disney newspaper. Security of Nigerians not negotiable, Buhari restates. And DSS raises the alarm on destabilization plots. And that you find in page four in Disney newspaper. Federal government laments high oil production costs, says it's threat to fiscal stability. And better health care for soldiers. Um, that's an opinion poll right there in Disney newspaper this morning. Federal government committed to ending impunity, says Malami. That's in page five on Disney newspaper. And also, lastly, in this day this morning, um, that will be all this morning on this day newspaper. CBN sectoral intervention saved Nigeria 1.3 trillion naira annual import bill. And security of Nigeria not negotiable, Buhari restates. Thoughts on this, gentlemen? Oh, well, uh, the sectoral interventions, yes. um, well, CBN is right to a certain extent because okay. what that did was that you have this list of 40 something items that you cannot access dollars through the official windows to import them. Okay. So definitely that will have conserved a lot of um, foreign exchange for Nigeria. Uh, but we, we now need to be able to take it further. If you say we're not going to import this, that is supposed to force people in the country to manufacture those items. Uh, but when you go further down that same page, you see HFG laments high cost of oil production. It is not just oil production that has a high cost. It is practically everything that we produce. Yeah. Uh, it is the reason why, despite the intervention in the rice space, for example, our rice may still not be as competitive in pricing at the end of the day as we would have loved it to be. That is because there are a lot of issues within our production cycle or, or, or segment that add a lot of cost onto what we do. One of it is power, even okay. the roads. When the plant, not, not west, is where most of Nigeria's rice is planted, for example. But there are 21 million consumers in Lagos. You need to move it from Kebi and, and other part of northwest to Lagos. Where is the road? Now, m many would argue the fact that the closure of our borders is not Nigeria's, it's not a panacea to our economic growth and development. Would you, would you agree with that? Yes, it is not. Okay. At best, the closure of the border is interventional. So you want um, to send a message. You probably also want to have a basis for discussing with your neighboring countries. Yes. But it cannot, it's not a sustainable way to drive in internal production and growth. Yeah. Any you, thoughts on this? Yeah. Uh, the border closure for me it was a panic movement, or the panic action. Can we say it's palliative for me? No, it is. It's more of a knee jerk reaction. Ex wow. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It was just done to be, for me to be sane and to just manage the situation at hand. But the question was, before you went that route, did you put anything in place? As you were saying, the cost of production, even in Nigeria, if you ask the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, they will tell you what they face on a daily basis, even from small uh, manufacturers. So it's, uh, it was a... Uh, panic measure and it's not long term sustaining. One more comment on yes, that from yes. the rice from the rice perspective. Okay. Really. Um, one of the main issues we need to deal with in the rice space is the yield per hectare of our rice. The yield per hectare of rice in Nigeria is about one point eight tons per hectare. In China it is six point nine tons. Compare one point eight to six point nine. In Egypt, it is 8.2. Egypt is in Africa. So when your yield is 1.8, what you need to focus on, do you know that if we just double the yield per hectare, we will feed Nigeria with rice? But could, could there be factors meditating against is our it, is inability it, to produce as much as that? I mean, it's a, it's a research thing. Okay. 
That means when you plant your own rice, it brings out this much of tons per hectare that you planted. But in other places, it's bringing out much more. So it's a research thing. Your border closure will never be able to address issues such as that. It may give a temporary advantage to the private investors in that space. You also want them to make money. That's why I said it's at best interventional. Oh, let's, let's take a look at the headlines this morning, also from the Vanguard newspaper. Shore kicks as DSS applies to transfer him to correctional facility. Page nine <laughs> in the Vanguard newspaper. That's something to bother upon this morning on of the press. We've uncovered plot to destabilize Nigeria. Now, this is um, the DSS speaking, and that also was in this day newspaper. A papa gridlock too killed as tax team truck drivers clash. Mob invades Vanguard premises. Gridlock wasn't. We are on the trail of erring policemen, says Lagos CP. Loretta on the chair cost me trauma. Article tells court. Nara depreciates to 362.71 to the dollar in INE window. And U.S. backs hate speech bill as Kiyamo, Pandev, Difa. Shaun Lu renames Onikon Stadium after Mobolaji Johnson. Six arrested in Ghana for attacking Nigerian traders. We are no threat to national security, Ome Ellis tells the Senate. And 66 million pound payday for Anthony Joshua and the Reels Jr., $10 million. AFN board throws Gusau out. George emerges acting president. Now, gentlemen, let's quickly board on this. Um, the renaming of, of the stadium, I mean, would, would you commend, commend um, uh, Jide Shaolu for, for that? I mean, what's your take on that? I, 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 I think it's good. Uh, Mobulaji was a governor in Lagos State, and he had quite a good reputation uh, as, as a governor around here. So, uh, and when you look at the stadium that is being named after him, it's currently under construction. Now you can see that this is going to be a beauty by the time it's completed. So I, th I, think, it's, I think it's a nice, uh, nice one. Um, Shuri, the issue of Shuri kicks, the DSS applies <laughs> to transfer him to correctional facility. Let's, let's talk about this. Your thoughts and reaction on this, gentlemen? No. Yeah. I, will, I will relate that to what the Attorney General yeah. was, uh, said through one of his aides about uh, impunity. Uh, personally, I feel the government is the first culprit of impunity using Shuri's case. The court is asked him to be released on bail and with all the conditions met and all the stringent uh, bail conditions that he shouldn't leave Abuja and all so. And the man was ready to blah, oblige and uh, all that. But still up to now, I think about a month now, he's still being held. Yeah. And then our Attorney General is talking about uh, impunity. Well, then the federal government, Malami said the federal government is committed to, to put an end to impunity. Yeah, um, but should, they are the first should we, should we take that as a slap on the wrist mm. or should we? It, I, 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 I think he, we need to think seriously about some of those comments before we make them. Um, because the world of yesterday is totally different from today when whatever is happening in Abuja, even in specific agency in a particular country, are public information all over the whole world. They are, they, the, 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 they know about Shore in America, in Australia, in the UK, everybody remember. So they are also now listening to the fact that we said, oh, impunity. So somebody might be trying to compare. Okay, the court said you should release him, you're still holding him. Or you said there will be no impunity. Um, is that a contradiction somewhere? You know, those are some of the issues uh, uh, that, that, that are out there. But the DSS facility apparently is a more comfortable place to be. In. So moving this gentleman to a to correctional, a correctional facility, facility. Um, I, I'm not so sure. I, I've not heard comments about this called, called, uh, correctional facility, but I've heard comments about the DSS facility that it is okay. You can feel like a hotel, you know, but I don't know about this correctional facility. Interesting. <laughs> and um, the, the DSS is crying out and let it also that they've uncovered plot to destabilize Nigeria. Reactions on this gentleman? They should tell us more. Yeah. What have they uncovered? <clears throat> We need to know this. They say, I read and they said in six geopolitical zones and these actions were going to be uh, 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 almost about the same time. That's the plan. But who are the people behind this? What have they done? I'm not saying there's no plot. But why, what is the reason behind this plot? DSS should be telling us. 
U.S. banks hate speech bill as Kiyamo Pandev differ. <laughs> they should go and pass it in their own country first. Exactly. Yeah. Let it start from them. And we'll quickly take a look at the headlines. In the Nation newspaper this morning, hate speech. U.S. officials meet senators. Abdullahi pushes ahead. And also, Kano's lawyer wanted over killing of cops. Um, Ranches, federal government, gazettes, 141 reserves. And INEC to lobby lawmakers over smart card reader. Agency said it must have legal status. Yakubu laments politicians' attitude. And DSS raises security red alerts. CBN 1.3 trillion naira spent to import rice with orders in 12 months. And federal government condemns attack on Nigeria traders in Ghana. That is on page 44 in the Nation newspaper. Anybody so, on this? Surprising that the smart card reader is still not part of the mm. current law we're using for election in Nigeria. Now, apart from the smart card reader, we now go into the space of things like uh, electronic Good. transmission of result and all those stuff. These are very serious issues. And that is why, in my opinion, we need to start early. Look at the fact that electronic transmission, um, there are a lot of blind spots in Nigeria. You, cannot, you can't even get send an SMS in some parts of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So... If we're talking of electronic transmission, then a place where you can send an SMS, there is no internet, there's nothing, we need to begin to ask ourselves, how are we going to transmit so that whatever is required, we'll be able to put it in place and insert it in our laws. I learned that in, in, in Kenya, Kenya also did some, they did electronic transmission, and they also had blind spots, but they had a solution to how they were able to handle that. That kind of a solution who have to be in the Electoral Act. So the National Assembly must bring up that Electoral Act again. Let's fix all the issues well ahead of 2023 so that we can even test strong. There are some uh, off-cycle elections. We can test strong and, and be sure this thing is working. Otherwise, we will be in that same 2019 position come 2023. Now, the um, psychologists has come out and say they might have to boycott the next election if this is not addressed. Now, many people will argue the fact that the PDP were in power for 16 years and nothing of this issue was addressed and dealt with by them. And that Secondo's speech comes as just foul crying. Your reaction to this? Yeah, I, I'm one of those who feel Secondo's is seeking sympathy. Like you said, they were in power for 16 years did nothing about empowering or strengthening our electoral heart. But having said that, presently, they have oppositions. They will have members in the National Assembly yes. that are supposed to be opposition, lead opposition. And these are part of a positive opposition that the people want to see. And why are their senators or the uh, out of rep members, why are they not speaking out about it? Why is it the national chairman who is going on the papers? Mm-hmm. And we take a look this morning at the headlines in the Punch newspaper. Banks non-performing loans declined by 1.14 trillion naira. And that's on page 27 in the Punch newspaper. Fowler's tenor and Sunday Buari yet to write the Senate. And page 20 in the Punch newspaper. 2.5 billion naira libel. Article files deposition against Buari's aid on Nochier. And Babcock graduates emerges overall national best in law school bar exams. Confusion as federal government plans turning grazing reserves to ranches. Page 2 in the Punch newspaper. Administration should list seven states for remodeling scheme and federal government's project alien to U.S. To us, Plateau Benue says. And Buhari unveils Made in Nigeria War Vehicles Promises Security. Senate for Security of Nigeria's Territorial Waters by Israel. Lagos CP rescues abducted copper arrest kingpin. And Dabiri Erewa condemns attack on Nigerian traders in Ghana. And dead wish for hate speech. This and more making the headlines in the Punch newspaper. Confusion as federal government plans turning grazing reserves to ranches. Well, it's good that their plans have been revealed. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think Nigerians are going to sit back on the issue around ranches and herding. We had said ranching is the way to go. Okay, maybe they are now saying, okay, let's actually have those ranches. But should these ranches now be the former grazing reserves that we have? Uh, what are the implications of that for each of the uh, places where these reserves are? 
One beautiful thing is that Nigerians are more conscious about issues of ranching and headers and yes. all these things. So whatever is going to happen, we'll need to carry along the governors of, of, the, of the states and all of us are going to be involved. So I don't, I don't think any backdoor issue can happen with this. We'll be watching that space. Absolutely. I agree with him because people are more... If you, if in that, I think there's an headline that says that uh, Benue and Plato, uh, that federal government's program, they're alien. He's alien to them. They're alien to them, yes. Yeah. And I'm sure he's around these uh, uh, ranches and grazing. You, you, know, you know, there was a livestock so, transformation program. Yeah, exactly. So, Ooh. and if it's the sitting <laughs> governors are saying he's alien to them. So, we are, people are aware and people are watching and they're ready to, to ask questions. People are aware, people are watching. And lastly, we have complete sports with us this morning. Joshua reveal, reveals plans for Trilogy fight with Reuse. And that's a fight everybody's looking out for this weekend. Moreno excited by Old Trafford return. And Pogba ruled out of Moreno's return. Atletico keen to sign Cavani. And Villa plot January loan move for here and Cho. We're Fred in the D. Leicester will keep walking. Messi, I was bothered when Ronaldo equaled my record. And Cellini, Ronaldo robbed of Ballon d'Or. Mbappe to decide future next summer. Mm. Any contemplation on the airlines this morning? Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just loving this uh, Man U uh, Tottenham match. <laughs> it's going to go well. You know, Man U fired Mario. Mario is now the coach of Tottenham. And Tottenham and Man U are clashing. Beautiful. <laughs> Ago, Mourinho was fired by yes. Manchester United, and this is his first return to Old Trafford. Uh, we look to see the kind of reception mm. he gets, and then you know Manchester United presently they're not there. Yes, as in their football, and since Mourinho has come to Tottenham, they seems to have uh, refound their winning streak. They have won their last two. Oh, right. United have drawn theirs. All right. So, any, any, any thoughts? Any thoughts on um, the rematch between Joshua Anthony Joshua and, and Reeves? Any thoughts on that as we wrap this up this morning? Oh, it's, it's like you said, it's something everybody's looking for. Oh, yes. To. We say, and it's a whole lot of money for, for Joshua anyway. Uh, but I, I can't wait to watch this particular match. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's always a pleasure to have you on the program, and thanks for coming. It's good to be here. Thank and you. this is where we are going to wrap things up. Join us again tomorrow by 8.30 a.m. on Off the Press. Have a great day.